Hi folks, Paragon Rocky here. Welcome to Mass Effect. Anybody who's played an RPG in the last like 10 years has probably heard of this one. And I am going to play all of them. I downloaded the trilogy off of Origin. Yep, I went to Origin for this. And I even downloaded all the DLC, so I'll be doing all those too. This is going to be probably the biggest playthrough I've ever done on the channel. And fun fact, OBS wouldn't even stream it unless I ran it in administrator mode. So if you're trying to run this on your own, you can't figure out why it's not working. Give that a try, see if it works out for you. And here comes the bane of my existence trying to play this game. Well, first I'm going to check make sure that the uh, subtitles are on. Yeah, that's all fine. Also, uh, fun thing, when I was trying to run this in uh, full screen mode, it wasn't quite working. I kept getting black bars. You have to edit a file in the game directory. Feel free to Google that one. Alright, uh, dialogue. You know what, let's get music volume a little bit lower. Sound effects a little bit lower. Dialogue to about there. Just because I, if I'm talking over music, I don't want to be completely drowned out. Alright, gameplay. Subtails, yes. Auto save, yes. Difficulty normal. Level up on my own, thank you. Okay, we're good. Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Classified information requested. I kind of wish that my cursor looked a little bit more futuristic y, but. Secure connection confirmed. I guess maybe they couldn't pull that off. Alright, so I could go with Bog Standard John Shepard, but. This is my playthrough. I want to do it my own damn self. So we're gonna go custom mail. Please log in to access your. Program. And it's me, so Rocky Shepherd. Why not? Warning: data corruption detected. Fucking Windows Vista. Please reconstruct profile. Confirm pre-service history. Alright, so this is a fun little thing. It doesn't affect the game too much, but people do mention it in background. It gives you a bit more flavor for your character, so you didn't just, just kind of pop out of the earth one day and start kicking ass. You got Spacer, where you were born on spaceships and followed your parents' footsteps. Colonist, where your parents were slaughtered and you listed with the military. Or Earthborn, where you were basically a street criminal until you turned 18 and then enlisted. I like colonists, I don't know, I, I like the tragic backstory. Confirmed and in that program. same vein, I'm gonna go Soul Survivor where my squad was horribly killed and I survived alone. War Hero is kinda badass, Ruthless is the other end of the badass scale, but we'll get to that later. Soul Survivor I'm gonna go with. Confirm military specialization. Now here's something fun, you've got all guns, all tech, all psychic powers, or biotics as they're called in this game. And then you've got kind of mixes of the two, so uh, combat and tech, combat and psychic, and psychic and combat. Me, I don't know, I don't use any other gun than the pistol 9 times out of 10, so being able to only use pistols isn't really a problem for me, and being able to dismantle shields and hack better, I like that. So I'm going to go with engineer for this playthrough. Confirm facial identification. I don't know, I don't like this face. Although to be fair, I don't like any face in this game. They really improved the uh, the face tech for the future games and then completely tanked it for Andromeda. <laughs> so we're gonna try and make our own so I, I love how the bog standard John Shepard is not even an option in the presets. Like you click on these, you get through a bunch of these different guys. My usual strategy for uh, custom characters is to find the first guy who kinda looks a little bit like me and then tweak it very, very slightly. Like, I'm gonna leave his uh, facial features more or less intact. I'm not gonna try to, like, tweak his uh, brow or chin or anything like that. My first uh, test run of this, I ended up having the brow, like, three inches off his face. It looked like a porch roof. It was crazy. Yeah. Face camera, thank you. Skin tone, we're gonna brighten him up just a little bit. That's probably fine. Complexion. Yeah, it's really kind of hard to get a middle ground here, but we'll go with this. Scar, uh, the cheek's not bad. I kind of want the brow scar. Just because my nose is always a little bit messed up. I like having that reflected in the games. 
uh, facial structure will actually drastically change what your character looks like. I'm probably going to stick him with uh, what I had originally, which I think is this one. Anything here I want to change? No. Eyes. Oh, that's still head. Can I get like the uh, the pale blue? I think that was what it, what it was on already. Um, hair. And get the brows. Maybe change those a little bit up. I've got pretty thick brows myself. Uh, facial hair color. Yeah, it's a little closer to my eyebrows. Is there anything else I want to change on here? I feel like facial structure might be something I can change up. That's probably better, I think. See, I know once I pick this, I cannot change it again. So I'm like having that last minute thought of, is this going to look terrible for the rest of the game? So it's basically down between default here, which is kind of a thick neck, or one of these dudes. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Let's go with this one. He's, he's default. He's not going to look terrible in the game. All right. Profile reconstruction complete. Am I going to be happy with that the rest of the game? I think so. Come game two, it's going to be a whole lot better. And we've already gone through this. So, on to the story. Well, what about Shepard? He grew up in the colonies. He knows how tough life can be out there. His parents were killed when slavers attacked Mindwar. He saw his whole unit die on a cruise. He could have some serious emotional scars. Every soldier has scars. Shepard's a survivor. Yeah, see there how my eyebrow is normal and not six inches off my face? Yeah, this is how you know that you've made a good character that's not horrifyingly hideous. I'll make the call. In the year 2148, explorers on Mars discovered the remains of an ancient spacefaring civilization. In decades that followed, these mysterious artifacts revealed startling new technologies, enabling travel to the furthest stars. The basis for this incredible technology was a force that controls the very fabric of space and time. They call it the greatest discovery in human history. The civilizations of the galaxy call it Mass Effect. They don't give you much time to read that shit, do they? Damn, I was blowing through that. Terrace Prime relays in range, initiating transmission sequence. Like, that's all the background you get. You They just throw you into this. Although, to be fair, there's a crap load of background to be to be given, so... We are connected. Calculating transit mass and destination. Any proper prolong would be like half an hour of, okay, here's the history of the universe as it exists. Also, there aren't that many, like, space opera sort of games out there now. Like... Uh, there's this, there's, um, in a way, I want to say, uh, what was that game series that I loved and ended up trying terrible in the third act? There's a dude who cuts people, uh, necromorphs, everyone's dead. It's, uh, Dead Space, there it is. Yeah. That you, you can call that an epic, I think, because there is like, a, a much broader story outside the main plot. And if you want to dig into it, there's a ton of supplementary material that explains who every single person is and what their backstory was. And Thrusters, check. Navigation, check. Internal emissions sync engaged. Ladies and gentlemen, Seth Green. Drift, just under 1500k. 1500 is good. Your captain will be pleased. Nihilus gave you a compliment, so you hate him. You remember to zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across the galaxy and hit a target the size of a pinhead, so that's incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. Call me paranoid. Nice to meet you, paranoid. I'm Rocky. Council helped fund this project. Oh god, dad right jokes already. It's been eight minutes. Investment. Yeah, that is the official story. 
Only an idiot believes the official story. Okay. I don't know whose idea it was to make this controllable by the mouse, but this thing will just fucking go wherever you want if you're not careful. So I see myself picking the wrong option later just because I wasn't careful and had this like right on the border and it was like just you couldn't pick one. You always expect the worst. Now bad feelings are an occupational hazard. But we don't go anywhere unless there's a good reason, so what are we doing here? Joker. Status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Ethan Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. You know, it's not a big ship. It took him like 10 seconds to get back there. You get that, Commander? Great. You pissed the Captain off, and now I'm going to pay for it. Don't blame me. The captain's always in a bad mood. Only when he's talking to you, Joker. Alright, so we'll get used to the controls here for a second. Press O to access the codex. Holy shit, is this thing packed. You got your regular tutorials, which I'm not going to go through, because hopefully the game will just tell me how things work. Your personal history, if you want to read all about yourself. The uh, history of humanity from... The year we first built our first lunar, co lunar colony up to the day you were born, or the year you were born, to current date. So it's 2183, you were born where? 2154. So you're 29 years old in this game. Yeah, I, I buy that. It's not, uh, it's not outside the realm of possibility for you to be fairly high ranking in the military at that age. I don't think, anyway. Someone can tell me if I'm wrong. Council races. Right now, all we know about are Turians. Years ago, the Turians were invited to join the Citadel Council. Yeah, I'm not going to let this guy read all that, and I'm not going to make you read all that. Suffice it to say, these guys are kind of lizard-like. Kind of like lizard bird, almost, I would say. And very militaristic. Like, a good chunk of their, um, of their population serves in the military. I think by comparison, in humanity's case, in this game, it's something like 9% of the population is militarized. And then, the Systems yeah. Alliance is an independent supranational government representing the interests of humanity as a whole. The Alliance is responsible for the governance and defense of all... So yeah, every, every race has their own uh, organizational structure, and they all report to the Council, who basically runs, you know, the galaxy. Let's just mark all views so they don't pop up and don't glow up again. I hit E, I think, to talk to people. The captain's waiting for you in the comm room, Commander. You probably don't want to keep the captain waiting, Commander. I'll do what I want. I'm a commander. To talk to an ally, approach and press E. Congratulations, Commander. Looks like we had a smooth run. You heading down to see the captain? I'm on my way to give him a status update right now. With all due respect, sir, maybe he'll finally tell you what we're really doing out here. You think the Alliance Brass is holding out on us? If all we're supposed to do is test out the stealth system, why is Captain Anderson in charge? And then there's Nihilus. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre, a Turian Spectre, on a shakedown run? It doesn't add up. What do you know about the stealth system? I just know it masks our location from scans and sensors. Cutting edge technology. The Normandy's the only ship with this prototype drive. But why are we fully staffed? A skeleton crew would be cheaper, less chance of security leaks, too. Plus, there's Nihilus. It's pretty obvious the shakedown run is just a cover. For what? Damned if I know, Commander. We're out here on false pretenses. I'm not a fan of being left in the dark. So I'm not going to pick every single dialogue option for every conversation I ever get into because this is already going to be like a 40 to 60 hour playthrough. But some things you're going to want, I'm going to want to know about. So I'm going to ask about them. Do you have a problem with the captain? No, sir. But I can't figure out what he's doing here. Captain Anderson is one of the most decorated special forces officers in the service. If he melted down all his medals, he could make a life-size statue of himself. I would not mind having a statue of Keith David, personally. Dude's awesome. He's treating this shakedown run too seriously. Something big is going on. You don't trust Nihilus. I don't like Turians in general. It runs in my family. 
My grandfather fought in the first contact war. Lost a lot of friends when the Turians hit us. So real quick, just some history on that. When humanity first got out into the galaxy using the Mass Effect relays that we discovered, we ran into the Turians and somehow we immediately started the war. And we ended up surrendering to the Turians because they are way, way better at military shit than we are. That was 30 years ago. You can't blame Nihilus for that. No, I guess not. But it still makes me nervous to have a Spectre on board. Especially a Turian. We're an Alliance vessel, human military, but Nihilus doesn't answer to the captain like the rest of us. Spectres operate outside the normal chain of command. And they don't come along just to observe shakedown runs. <laughs> Nihilus looks like he's expecting some heavy action. I don't like it. I'll see if I can get some answers when I see him. Good luck, come. Okay, that one kind of fucked up a little bit. Not sure what happened there. So yeah, real quick, this is the Normandy. It is a prototype style ship, like we heard. And despite what you might think, it's actually like what we're seeing here is about half the ship right right away. It's very, very small. What do you think, Commander? We won't be staying on Eden Prime too long, will we? I'm itching for some real act. I sincerely hope you're kidding, Corporal. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. Only a fool goes looking for a fight. Sorry, Commander. Okay, something's wrong with the uh, the audio here. I've been on a mission like this before, not one with the Spectre on board. I'm not gonna ask him all that shit. You just treat this like every other assignment you've I'm sure I'll have plenty of time to talk to Jenkins after the mission. You to say, you proved yourself on a coos. Everybody knows what you can do. This is my big chance. I need to show the brass what I can do. You're young, Corporal. You have a long career ahead of you. Don't do something stupid to mess it up. Don't worry, sir. I'm not gonna screw this up. The captain's waiting for me. Goodbye, Commander. Jenkins, Dr. Chocolate. Commander Shepard, I was hoping you'd get here first. It will give us a chance to talk. Do you need to find a way out of that giant collar you're wearing? The captain said he'd meet me here. He's on his way. I'm interested in this world we're going to. Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. They say it's a paradise. Yes, a paradise. Serene, tranquil, safe. Eden Prime has become something of a symbol for your people, hasn't it? Proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it, really? If you've got something to say, just say it. Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? I think it's about time we told the Commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. Now, I'm going to be petty here for just a second. Uh, Captain Anderson here looks like someone carved a face out of a potato. I'm just going to say it right at, right now. I figured there was something you weren't telling us. We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. What's the payload, Captain? A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. I thought the Protheans vanished 50,000 years ago. Their legacy still remains. The mass relays, the Citadel, our ship drives. It's all based on Prothean technology. This is big shit. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something like this. We need to bring the beacon back to the Citadel for proper study. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. Why didn't we keep the beacon for ourselves? You humans don't have the best reputation. Some species see you as selfish, too unpredictable, too independent, even dangerous. Sharing that beacon will improve relations with the Council. Plus, we need their scientific expertise. They know more about the Protheans than we do. Okay, that's the fair. Beacon's not the only reason I'm here, Shepard. Nihilus wants to see you in action, Commander. He's here to evaluate. What's going on, Captain? The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel Council. The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, shows how far the Alliance has come. 
Not many could have survived what you went through on Akuz. You showed a remarkable will to live, a particularly useful talent. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. I, I didn't get you anything. Why would a Turian want a human in the Spectres? Not all Turians resent humanity. Some of us see the potential of your species. We see what you have to offer to the rest of the galaxy and to the Spectres. We are an elite group. It's rare to find an individual with the skills we seek. I don't care that you're human, Shepard. I only care that you can do the job. I assume this is good for the Alliance. Earth needs this, Shepard. We're counting on you. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. You'll be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. I think we got it covered. Just give the word, Captain. We should be getting close to Eden. Captain, we got a problem. What's wrong, Joker? Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. Okay. Get down. So you're saying somebody is attacking and destroying the Paradise Planet? Who could have seen that coming? This is pretty much like standard Star Trek 101 right here. Oh my god, it's Master Hand! Everything cuts out after that. No comm traffic at all. Just goes dead. There's nothing. Reverse and hold the 38.5. I'm kind of amazed he had the presence of mind to remember the exact time that something showed up on the screen so he'd call it up. Take us in, Joker, fast and quiet. This mission just got a lot more complicated. A small strike team can move quickly without drawing attention. It's our best chance to secure the beacon. Grab your gear and meet us in the cargo hold. Tell Elenko and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. Isn't Elenko the co pilot? Engaging stealth systems. Now again, this is somewhat hard. Uh, this is something on the hard end of the uh, most scale of science fiction hardness. Which means that, with the exception of mass technology, a lot of the science you're going to see is pretty realistic. Which is why, when they say stealth ship, they don't mean invisible, they mean hard to detect. Nihilus will scout out ahead. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. We've got his back, Captain. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck! We are approaching drop point two. No need to show us actually getting out of the plane. Okay, so Codex popped up with a whole bunch of new stuff. We can see... Yeah, we know about that. Spectres, the war, so on and so forth. Let's just mark it all viewed and move on. Also, is there. Okay, this is how we trigger our guns. We can check our journal to see. Yeah, objective find the beacon, head to the dig site. We don't have any assignments right now, but we'll get a whole lot more of these as the uh, game opens up. Equipment. Search between uh, weapon types. Right now, I don't have anything except. Uh, the, well, I mean, I guess I technically have a level one everything, but as a engineer, the only weapon I can actually use is the pistol. Low recoil, high, high accuracy, more useful at close range. Alenko's got the old, like, they've all got the, the basics. Uh, if I check my squad, yeah, here's where you can spend your points. I've got three points right now. I'm gonna go ahead and dump two into pistols and we need to get to here for hacking so we'll put one into let's you repair or bypass objects 
Let's you open secure objects. I got a point in each. Um, you know what? I'll leave the point alone for right now and just uh, come back for it later. It's still there, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, Elenko. He's got some... Uh, he's a sentinel, so he's got experience with combat and biotics. So let's get you going with... Um, throw and... First aid. And Jenkins. He's a soldier. He's going to be all about guns. So we'll give him some extra armor. And some skill with assault rifles. Because I'm sure he'll be saving my ass for a long time to come. And let's just get, let's just get a save going. So we don't have to go through all that again. Okay, yep, we can put guns away. Here's the sprint button. Thank you. So yeah, I don't have any other guns I can... Oh, wait, hang on. Okay, so the only gun I can actually train in officially is the, uh, the pistol. And I don't quite know how to set up the pistol on my... Uh, quick inventory, unfortunately. So I'm just going to have to scroll through it manually. There you go. I wish I could have played this on the console, but... PC is just as good, once I get used to it. I couldn't quite get the uh, controller to work for this game. Maybe it's not supported. This looks like goodies. I got a heat sink and a stimulant pack. So if I go into my codex... Yeah, upgrades. Thank you. Now what I'd like to do is maybe actually use one of these upgrades if I can. Equipment. Yep. There we go. Let's get to my pistol. Use the heat sink. Can I not equip the heat sink? And that's it. How about my armor? Do I have a thing for that? Yep. Stimulant pack. There we go. I am partially upgraded. And I've got radar. I don't really have a map. So we're just going to have to walk in the direction of things and hope I can figure out where the hell I'm supposed to be going. They really improve the, uh, the controls and the interface for the second and third games. So let's just head in the direction of all the blinky lights. This is my sprint button. It's quiet. Just quiet enough. Oh, Jenkins. 